For many centuries, men and mages lived harmoniously until it was disrupted by a mage sorcerer named Mordred. Turning against man, Mordred sought great power by harnessing dark magic. He gathered his army and headed to Canela, the last remaining castled city led by the then ruler, King Uther Pendragon. During the battle, Mordred and his dark forces brought waste and destruction to the kingdom as they rode and controlled gigantic war elephants. Together with a group of warlocks, Mordred mercilessly uses dark magic, causing a number of knights to get burned into ashes. Other's younger brother, Vortigern, expresses his loss of confidence, suggesting that they should willingly surrender. King Other, on the other hand, dismisses his remark, charging against Mordred's forces with his own army. While his loyal ally and army general, Sir Bedivere, leads the fight against the enemy forces, King Other rides his horse to reach Mordred's lair. Inside, King Other goes face to face with Mordred, who is currently surrounded by the warlocks. King Other pulls out his ultimate weapon, the Excalibur, a sword attributed with magical powers. The Excalibur overcomes Mordred's protective magic, allowing King Other to come closer to him. With one swing of the sword, King Uther kills Mordred. The gigantic war elephants are released from Mordred's control, and they disappear along with the rest of the enemy forces. After the war, King Uther and his council hold a meeting to discuss their plans for the future. Vortigern suggests eliminating all of the mages for what Mordred did, but Bedivere insists on preserving their peaceful relationship. Bill, another member of King Uther's council, questions Vortigern's true intentions, reminding Vortigern that he and Mordred used to study together. In defense of Vortigern, Lord Mercia mentions that the mages no longer show themselves. King Uther interrupts them just before an argument ensues and ends the meeting by emphasizing his opposition towards Vortigern's idea. A while later, Vortigern orchestrates a coup against Uther with the support of his loyal subject, Mercia. Vortigern gathers his henchmen, the Blacklegs, and attacks the castle city. He also arranges a deal with the Sirens to gain a stronger form. Vortigern brings his beloved wife, Elsa, to a mysterious underground pit and stabs her to death. He lets her blood spill on the water, summoning the Sirens. In exchange for his sacrifice, the Sirens grant him powers, becoming a demon knight. Meanwhile, King Uther rushes to get his wife, Igraine, and their young son, Arthur. King Uther sneaks with them out of the castle, as the Blacklegs continue to cause mayhem all over Camelot. When they reach the docks, Vortigern, the newly turned demon knight approaches them. He throws a spear towards Igraine, killing her in an instant. Clueless of the mysterious demon knight, young Arthur escapes alone through a boat that sails towards Londinium, where three prostitutes find him by the river. The prostitutes adopt Arthur and raise him in a brothel. Throughout his childhood, Arthur spends his time on the streets, doing chores in exchange for money. As he grows older, he makes friends with two other boys, Wet Stick and Back Lack. He also meets Kung Fu George, his Chinese friend and teacher who owns a martial arts school. Eventually, Arthur has grown into a tough crime boss who gets into fights with those that have been harassing him and his prostitute guardians. On the other hand, he is tormented by his nightmares of the mysterious demon knight who killed his parents. Following the defeat of King Uther back in Camelot, Vortigern took over as the new king and Mercia became his new general. Throughout the years, Vortigern has been ruling Camelot ruthlessly, putting the city's resources towards building a sacred tower near the castle. One day, he discovers that the water surrounding the castle has diminished, revealing the Excalibur currently stuck in a large stone. The Blacklegs have a commotion around the stone, dashing towards the Excalibur to try and take it out. Later, Vortigern speaks with the Sirens in the mysterious underground pit. He asks them why the Excalibur has resurfaced when he is still not yet ready. The sacred tower that he is building is not yet complete, so he is unable to staply use magic yet. The Sirens inform Vortigern that Arthur, the born king, will inevitably come to him. Vortigern then learns that he will only achieve full power if he kills Arthur and takes the power of the Excalibur. The Sirens also remind him that he can use the powers of the Demon Knight again if he is willing to sacrifice another loved one. Afterwards, Vortigern orders the Blacklegs to capture all the men in the city. He becomes even more intent on looking for Arthur, the born king and the only person who can pull out the sword. In Londinium, Arthur visits his friend, Lucy, a prostitute who was previously harassed by a group of Vikings. He brings her three pouches of coins and tells her that the Vikings apologized for what they did. Lucy looks at the coins doubtfully, as she does not believe that the Vikings willingly gave her money. Just then, Blackleg Knights march into the brothel, aggressively looking for a man named Goosefat Bill. Arthur finds Goosefat Bill inside the brothel and decides to reveal him to the Blacklegs. After Goosefat Bill is arrested, Jack's Eye, a Blackleg surgeon who is also their acquaintance, confronts Arthur along with Wet Stick and Backlack. 
Jack's eye asks them for the truth behind what happened to Lucy and the Vikings. Arthur reveals that they were forced to hunt down the Vikings upon learning that they hurt Lucy. As it turns out, Arthur had confronted Greybeard, the leader of a group of Vikings. They had a fight with Greybeard and the Vikings, but were able to collect a year's worth of wages for Lucy's sake. Jack's eye tells Arthur that the Vikings are protected by King Vortigern, and that he will face serious charges for what he did. Early in the morning, Blackleg Knights return to the brothel to arrest Arthur. Backlack wakes Arthur in the middle of his sleep and helps him escape, but the Blacklegs immediately discover Arthur. Arthur is taken to a boat, where he is captured along with other men and children. He looks around and finds himself in the kingdom of Camelot, near the sea where men are being tested to remove the Excalibur. Arthur becomes impatient and nonchalantly decides to approach the stone. When he places both of his hands in the sword, it begins to light up. A powerful force surrounds the entire kingdom, causing the ground to briefly shake. Arthur successfully pulls the Excalibur out of the stone, but is overwhelmed by the powerful force. He ends up falling unconscious on the ground while holding the sword in his hands. After a while, Arthur wakes up inside a dungeon with Vortigern. Vortigern is intrigued by Arthur, his missing nephew who he has only met after a long time. He then explains to Arthur how he was able to pull out the sword. Arthur learns that he is the son of the late King Other Pendragon, the only man who can control the sword. Being the born king and direct heir of King Other makes Arthur the only other person who can use the Excalibur in its full power. Arthur tries to shut him off, insisting that he has long been a bastard son of a prostitute but to no avail. He is told that the Blacklegs have raided their brothel, and he has no home to return to. Having captured Arthur, Vortigern intends to have all the power for himself, sentencing Arthur to execution immediately. Later that day, news about the return of the Born King spread throughout the city. A large crowd of people gather in front of the ongoing tower to see Arthur. Vortigern, however, exercises his power and control over the people. He plans to show everyone his strength and dignity as king by executing Arthur in public. Before showing Arthur to the crowd, Lucy is brought to the tower along with the other prostitutes. Through Vortigern's orders, the Blacklegs kill Lucy in front of Arthur to further crush his morale. As Arthur faces the crowd, Vortigern and Mercia humiliate him by making everyone believe that he is weak. Meanwhile, King Other's former army general, Sir Bedivere, is leading a small group of rebel fighters against Vortigern. They have been living inside a cave hideout for years, keeping themselves away from the Blacklegs. One day, he is visited by a young woman known as the Mage. The Mage identifies herself as a servant of Merlin, the wizard who forged the Excalibur. Mage asks for Bedivere's assistance, as she was sent by Merlin to guide Arthur towards the Excalibur. Bedivere sends a few of his men and travels with Mage to Camelot in order to save Arthur from being executed. From a distance, Mage uses her magic, summoning a hawk to attack the Blacklegs around Arthur. She also controls the watchdogs and warhorses around, causing a commotion among the crowd and other Blackleg knights. In the midst of the chaos, Two of Bedivere's men, Percival and Rubio, run towards Arthur to release him from his binds and steal the Excalibur. Percival, Rubio, and Arthur are reunited with Mage as they all jump to the water, managing to escape from the Blacklicks. The group travels for days as they take Arthur to their cave hideout, where he meets Bedivere and Goosefat Bill. Arthur is surprised to see Bill in the hideout, aware that he had previously turned him in. Bedivere and Bill, who were both part of King Other's council, ask for Arthur's help in removing Vortigern from his throne. Despite their dislike towards Arthur, they believe that he is the only one who can defeat Vortigern. Arthur, on the other hand, does not believe that he is the born king, so he refuses to help them. They later become interested in what Arthur can do with the Excalibur. When they challenge Arthur to a fight, he initially refuses, but he soon ends up punching them and taking the sword from Bedivere. A sword fight between Arthur and Bill ensues, until Arthur senses the overwhelming power of the Excalibur. He sees flashes of visions while holding the sword, causing him to pass out once again. That night, Mage performs a ritual on the sword while Arthur is sleeping. Mage knows that Arthur is resisting the sword, and that he is having constant nightmares about the Demon Knight and his parents. She convinces Bedivere to bring Arthur to the Darklands, a place that can help him control the Excalibur. Upon their arrival in the Darklands, Mage tells Arthur that he must touch the sword to the altar stone to succeed. On his way, he encounters different species, but succeeds in reaching the altar stone. At that moment, Arthur sees visions of how the demon knight, revealed to be Vortigern, appeared on the dock while they were running away. He clearly sees his mother, Egraine, being stabbed by the spear, and his father, Other, fighting Vortigern using the Excalibur. Arthur also witnesses Other stab himself, thus turning his body into a large stone that holds Excalibur and falls into the depths of the ocean. 
On their way back to their hideout, Mage tends to Arthur's injuries. Through the vision, Arthur is then convinced that he is the born king. According to Bedivere, Vortigern was jealous of others' throne. This led Vortigern to arrange a deal with Mordred, agreeing that they would share power once he had defeated other. To prepare for the war, Mordred murdered the Mage King and took his staff to their sacred tower, where he unlocked the gigantic war elephant and the other dark forces. The staff was then neglected, allowing Merlin to steal the staff, forge it to become the Excalibur and use it to destroy the sacred tower. The Excalibur was then passed to the Lady of the Lake, who bound it to the bloodline of the Pendragons. Thus, only Other and his direct descendants will have control over the Excalibur. After Mordred was defeated by Other, it became Vortigern's ultimate goal to rebuild the Sacred Tower near the castle in order to possess magical powers like the mages. Back in the hideout, Arthur reunites with his childhood friends, Wet Stick and Backlack. Arthur learns of what the Blacklegs did in the brothel and their neighborhood. He realizes the value of his father's sacrifice and decides to plot against the downfall of his ruthless uncle. Later, Arthur Wet Stick, Backlack, and Backlack's son Blue become acquainted with Bedivere, Bill, Rubio, and Percival. During their meeting, Bill mentions that they must win the favor of the Twelve Barons, who represent the old families of England. Bill thinks that they can form up to 12,000 warriors to bring down Vortigern. However, Arthur thinks that Bill's plan is not necessary. Arthur deduces that the best way to take Vortigern down is to attack him behind his back. They proceed with Arthur's plan, starting with disrupting the construction of the tower by blocking the passageway of the supplies. The group also interrupts Vortigern's supply of slaves and burns down his favorite palace. Around the same time, Vortigern is also planning to meet with the barons in Londinium. His maid, Maggie, who is also a spy for Bedivere, hears about Vortigern's plan. She then heads to the cave hideout to report to Bedivere and the group. In effect, Arthur and the rebel fighters plan an assassination attack on Vortigern when he arrives in Londinium. On the day of the assassination, Vortigern arrives in Londinium by boat as the rebels had expected. Unbeknownst to them, Vortigern found out what Maggie did and has sent a decoy in his place to trap their group. Arthur, Bill, and Bedivere hide in a tower 175 yards away from the boat as Bill prepares to kill Vortigern with an arrow. Bill aims the arrow and is about to shoot, but he is stopped by Arthur, who notices the Vortigern decoy. Disregarding their original plan, Bill shoots an arrow towards Mercia, killing him. As a commotion erupts in Londinium, Arthur and the rest of the rebels take the chance to escape from the Blackleg Knights. They manage to defeat the Blacklegs, but Backlack gets stabbed. He willingly stays behind, insisting that he will meet them at the designated Sake House. As they run towards Kung Fu George Martial Arts School, Rubio sacrifices himself to keep the rest of the rebels from being captured. They climb up the wall into the school, seeking refuge against their Blackleg assailants. Arthur advises George to help his students escape through the manhole, but George insists on making them fight. Arthur fails to convince anyone to escape with him, so he decides to stay with them. Soon, a large number of Blacklegs attack the school, forcing everyone to fight back. Mage, who has been hiding behind the wall, assists the rebels by sending a flock of crows to distract the Blacklegs. A Blackleg knight finds her shortly after and points a dagger at her neck. Arthur catches sight of the mage, pushing him to activate the power of the Excalibur. With a few swings of the sword, Arthur single-handedly fights and defeats all of the remaining Blacklegs. The rebels, the students, and a few civilians nearby witness Arthur fighting and are all left stunned. Later, Arthur and the rebels escape through the manhole and head to their safe house. Blue rushes towards them, looking for his father Backlack. When he does not find him, Blue runs back and manages to reunite with Backlack in a small alley. That night, Arthur tends to the mage's injury while waiting for Blue and Backlack. The mage tells Arthur that there are people who saw him using the sword and are now fighting for his name. Despite that, Arthur feels reluctant about claiming the throne, saying that he does not want to be king. Backlack and Blue arrive at the safe house, but have been followed by one of the Blackleg surgeons. While Blue, Arthur, and the rest of the rebels board the boat, Backlack decides to sit in the safe house for the meantime. Just then, Vortiger and his men enter the safe house, finding Backlack alone. Blue runs back for his father, and for a while, pretends not to know him to protect them both. However, Vortigern threatens to cut off Backlack's ears. Blue then admits that he is his son, but Vortigern still cuts off his father's ear. Vortigern demands Blue to reveal where Arthur and the sword are. Just then, Arthur returns to the safe house and runs to quickly pick up Blue. As Arthur carries him back to their boat, Blue cries in despair watching Vortigern kill his father in front of him. Arthur is unable to sleep, reminded of all the people who were killed throughout his leadership. Hurt and frustrated, he decides to throw the Excalibur into the lake.
He runs through the woods when he is pulled into a puddle by the Lady of the Lake. She shows Arthur flashes of images that will happen if he does not accept the sword and the throne. The Lady of the Lake brings the Excalibur back to Arthur and encourages him to trust the mage. Convinced, Arthur reunites with the rest of their group and tells them that they will go into war. When they arrive at the hideout, however, they find their members and allies dead. A Blackleg surgeon delivers a message to Arthur, saying that if he does not show himself in the castle, Blue and the mage will both be killed. Arthur negotiates a deal through Bedivere, who brings the Excalibur to the castle in exchange for releasing the mage. Before traveling to Canelot, the mage gives Arthur a venom that will protect him in the coming war. Later that day, Arthur enters the castle alone to meet Vortigern. Vortigern is about to kill Arthur using the Excalibur, but the mage summons a gigantic snake, instantly killing all the Blacklegs inside. Arthur retrieves his sword during the chaos, while Vortigern has escaped. Outside, Arthur's group, consisting of Bedivere, Wet Stick, Bill, George, and Percival sneak into the dungeons to release all of Vortigern's prisoners. As the war begins, Vortigern decides to summon the powers of the Demon Knight once more. He makes another sacrifice by killing his only daughter, Keisha, offering her to the Sirens. Meanwhile, Arthur fights the Blacklegs using his sword. After seeing him fight, the rest of the Blacklegs surrender to him. Arthur takes the sword into the reconstructed tower, where its power unites with the magic inside. Later, he finds himself in a different realm with Vortigern, who has regained his demon knight form. The two engage in a ferocious fight, with Vortigern initially overpowering Arthur. At that moment, Arthur sees another vision of the previous battle between Vortigern and his father. In the vision, Arthur encourages Arthur to wield the Excalibur and claim it. With newfound strength, Arthur continues to fight until he successfully destroys Vortigern's weapon, weakening him. Arthur pays his last respects to Vortigern as a nephew before leaving him to die in the tower as it collapses. In the aftermath, the people of Camelot arrange a short ceremony for everyone who died during the war. Some time later, Arthur is in the castle, constructing the round table, where he and everyone who sits there will have equal status. George, Whetstick, and Percival are knighted under Arthur's orders, officially making them a part of his circle along with Bill and Bedivere. In the end, Arthur reclaims his right to the throne and is crowned the new king. King Arthur faces the people with dignity as he raises the Excalibur in the air. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword is a fantasy action-adventure film released in 2017. For a classic King Arthur tale, this film was done differently compared to its previous remakes. The storytelling was very fast-paced. It was executed through a fast-cutting style with few montages similar to those used in modern superhero movies. This kind of approach is unusual for an epic medieval film. It is not entirely awful, but the downside is that this kind of fast-paced storytelling also urges the camera work to move too fast, making the scenes confusing and nauseating. There are parts where the film becomes a comedy action, so most viewers, especially those who are fans of the Arthurian myth, may not be fond of this film. While the film features some of the best fantasy action possible, so many other elements are neglected. There is a significant lack of well-developed characters and coherent plot. Ideally, King Arthur tales tackle betrayal, brotherhood, redemption, and morality. The tales also emphasize the power of a king that stems from the people. Most of these themes are barely seen and have become a backstory. As a result, the majority of the action scenes lack substance. It would be better if the film referred to the source material as accurately as possible. Not only will the action scenes have more meaning, it will also do justice to the original story. For action film enthusiasts, this film is worth watching. But for the broad audience, including those who are interested in knowing more about the classic King Arthur tales, it will be better to check out other references.